G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday evening here in Australia, so obviously sort of Wednesday morning stateside time and the market is up. Nice little bounce again, 5.6 trillion dollars, so we're back above that 1.5 trillion. Sorry, I think I said 5.6 trillion, 1.56 trillion, hopefully I said that right. But yeah, very nice, back to where I thought we wouldn't go any lower than quite some... Uh, time ago, well not that long ago, but a few weeks ago to a month or so ago, I thought we won't go below 1.5 trillion and we did. We nearly went down uh, right to 1 trillion. So very, very interesting. Nice bounce, but we need to have a look at the charts. Okay, there's still just some sort of danger areas that we need to get through before we kind of get too carried away. And, you know, again, at least we have what we would think would be a confirmed, you know, restart of the bull run, if you think we're ever out of it. Uh, and again, I don't. I think this was just a retracement, but I still could be proven wrong. And I always have that thought in the back of my mind. As I always tell you on this channel, I've always got what I think is going to happen. And then what am I going to do if it doesn't happen? So I've always got a plan A and a plan B. And look, sometimes a plan C. And there's that old saying, those who, plan to f oh, those who fail to plan, sorry, plan to fail. So if you don't have a plan, then you're probably going to get yourself in trouble. You got to have targets where you, you know, maybe sell unless you're holding for the long term. But if you're not and it was a quick flip and it's not working out, maybe you got to sell. And again, then you've also got to have targets of when gets to something gets to something, then you either sell or diversify into something else. Again, I'm never going to offer you financial advice though. That's just my personal opinion. But having all your eggs simply in literally one basket. Now, I'm not saying you can't go all in in crypto. People will tell you not to. But I think this space is here to stay. I think, you know, Bitcoin is pretty solid. But even then, why would you want to have just Bitcoin? There's so many other things out there. And again, I'm not telling anyone to simply put all their eggs into one basket, i.e. crypto. But if you did come to crypto and do that, don't simply chase, you know, just one coin because you never know what might happen. And there's probably better gains out there. But again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. If you are really going to come to this space and you're only going to focus on you know, one or two coins, then I think Bitcoin would have to make a big part of that because that's the granddaddy of them all. It is the standard. I don't see that changing anytime soon. Although again, you know, maybe ETH flips Bitcoin for a very brief amount of time. Uh, in this bull run, I think then Bitcoin gets back above it. When it dumps, ETH will dump even harder. Maybe way into the future we might see Ethereum as a, a legit real long-term contender to Bitcoin. But at the moment, it's still not quite there, although it is building quite nicely. All right, look at that Bitcoin dominance. It's nearly at 48% now. Again, people are getting super bullish on Bitcoin at the moment, starting to you know chuck their money into it. And like I said, when Bitcoin starts to run, people start to pile their money into it. It's not that the alts aren't making money. I mean, have a look at XRP. It's done quite nice there. But people are generally going after Bitcoin. That's kind of, you know, the big mover out of most of them. There's always going to be a couple of outliers here. But Bitcoin's going to start running and it's really going to, you know, dwarf all the altcoins for a little while until it gets to its, you know, sort of near its peak and that's when the altcoins will then start to run but it's not that they won't go up with it bitcoin is you know like that old saying again uh a tide rises all ships a rising tide sorry lifts all ships so if bitcoin's going up it's dragging pretty much everything up with it again there's always a couple of outliers though all right gas prices around about a dollar so starting to move up as well well it'll be very interesting to see what happens with uh ei P1559 or 1559, whatever, you know, however you want to say it. But let's have a look. All right, it's basically a sea of green at the moment. At least it looks that way from the top part. What's done the best in the last 24 hours? What's the, been the biggest mover? Because Bitcoin's looking nice. Oh, there we go. XRP, uh, Huobi token, Theta. Nice, I bought some Theta, so hopefully uh, I'm doing all right with that. Uh, Terra Luna looking quite nice. Dash making moves. So we got a number of coins that are doing quite well. But look, Bitcoin's right up there. So again, uh, in the top 20 of the top 100, so that means there's 80 coins in the top 100 that didn't perform as well as Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's starting to gain that steam. But again, lots of uh, nice, nice moves here. Only you know, two uh, double-digit moves. And again, XRP, that 15% in 24 hours. 
Love that. Just be careful. They're probably going to be uh, a bit of a retracement coming sometime soon. All right, what about losses though? What hasn't performed? Or maybe everything's going to perform, but what's performed the least in the top 100? Well, there we go. Amps down a little bit. Uh, Leo token, MDX, stacks, flow. So there's definitely a few coins that have had some losses there, but nothing major. I mean, the worst loss in the top 100 is AMP that is down minus 2.7%. But I mean, AMP was up something crazy this week. It had like a 70% pump in two days, something like that. So the loss is minimal and the gains quite nice. Now this is what I'm watching for though. I want, I want you to pay close attention to the Bitcoin chart because there is something that's quite worrying there. All right. One and a big one. Two, three, four. Five, quite a big one with the wick. So sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're now about to go on eight green candles in a row. You generally don't have too many green candles like that without a big dip. Now it's not always going to be a solid body candle. It can be something sort of similar to this, a good sized body, but a really big wick. So I just get the feeling like if we don't get it in the next day or two, what's coming this weekend and it could come early like sort of thursday friday but even maybe saturday sunday i think we're going to have a big retracement it's going to get everyone hooked and everyone's going to start to go long on bitcoin again and then we're going to have a big red candle to liquidate all those longs i get the feeling like it might be coming somewhere around about here around about that forty-two thousand dollar level I get the feeling like they might push it all the way up to here the big players and because when everyone sees this and particularly if it breaks breaks it just so i'm going to say around the forty two thousand dollar level people will be going crazy and probably putting in mad longs and then boom we're going to see a big retracement maybe back down to sort of thirty four thousand. not saying it's going to happen again i never offer financial advice i just get the feeling it's coming because you don't usually have this many green candles in a row i mean you can just go back here one two three sorry one two three four five six seven eight Retracement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Look at that retracement. And I mean, we can go back, you know, almost as far as you want. You're not going to get too many green candles like that in one day. It just doesn't happen. There's usually a red, uh, a red card, as they would sort of say in sporting terms, somewhere thereabouts. But also, look at these green candles. They're nothing like what we're seeing right now. It is a really big move. And I think there's going to be a big red candle coming. So buyers be warned. Again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. I don't leverage trade, so I really don't care. Even if Bitcoin makes it up to sort of 42,000 and then dips back down to 34, maybe even 32,000 to really scare everybody. I'm not too worried. I'm buying, you know, if you're buying Bitcoin and if I'm buying Bitcoin, which I still am, I'm still buying it at about half price from its old all-time high. And if it does decide to go lower, I'll just keep buying it. I will buy that dip. But I'm not sold on Bitcoin until, number one, we break and stay above sort of 42,000. And particularly this, I get the feeling like we might reject from this and come back down. And that would be still bearish. It doesn't mean we're in a full bearish mode. But we really need to break this, hopefully, have a breakout, come back retest it and then start to make our way back up that is when i'm going to be like radio sweet 100 percent sold this absolutely was just a bear trap as opposed to this could still be a bull trap so the bear trap is it makes everyone think that it's going into a bear market but goes bullish and this and then there's the bull trap it makes everyone think that it's going to go bullish but then it goes bearish so we're still waiting for confirmation on exactly what we have here Right, moving on to news stories. US Bitcoin miner Stronghold files for a $100 million IPO to fund massive expansion. So Bitcoin mining in US is really starting to kick off. And look, it's going to kick off in lots of places around the world. And it'll be interesting to see what then happens with China. I wonder if China will get a bit of FOMO and say, you know what, we really shouldn't have kicked out too many miners. But at the same time, they don't want Bitcoin to do too well over there because they're really trying to sell their the Chinese yuan. So that is the dilemma that they're kind of facing. But it shows you that there's a big appetite for crypto at the moment, and particularly Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining. 
and excuse me you can guarantee they're going to be a very very green company as well it's going to be super hard particularly in the u.s not so much other places around the world but a lot of the developed nations at least they're going to be they're going to want to be 100 percent green or as close to it as they can otherwise they're going to have to you know pay taxes and things like that and, and penalty taxes because they are not environmentally friendly so i think there'll be lots of money to be made from bitcoin they are really going to start to push the green narrative and interesting again that they can just raise a hundred million dollars just like that and yeah let's just wait and see where the prices go because you got to remember these bitcoin you know miners their stock prices are going to go up and down with bitcoin so we're in the middle of a kind of bull run here so uh, i'm not saying don't buy them now and again never financial advice i have to keep saying that but I would probably wait to the bottom of the bear market before I bought into these. But again, I could be completely wrong and maybe they, they don't get hammered, uh, you know, by a bear market, but I get the feeling like they probably will. All right, this is actually a really sort of sad story in a number of ways. So Nuggets News, CEO under fire over alleged unpaid loans and investment funds. So Alex Saunders from Nuggets News, I really liked his channel. Uh, nothing's happening on his channel at the moment. It's probably got to do with this. All sorts of stuff out there at the moment. And it's hard to know exactly what's going on unless you know, you're know you involved in it. But it seems like he may have, number one, borrowed money off people, but also used money that people invested in a sort of startup of his. And then he has taken that money and put it on FTX. Uh, and, you know, unfortunately, lost a lot of it. Due, uh, with leverage trading now again it's total speculation at the moment nothing I, that I know of it has proven that yet but it does seem like things are kind of closing in at the moment and it's not looking good so popular crypto influencer Alex Saunders is under heavy criticism with numerous associates levying accusations Saunders owes them significant sums of Bitcoin Oh, this is not good. So according to the AFR, Saunders received roughly $7 million from 100 or so investors seeking to back his forthcoming stable project, Decentral, Decentral Bank. So he was starting up a decentralized stablecoin project himself, and it seems a lot of that money uh, was then moved over to FTX and put into leverage trading and unfortunately lost so this is really bad news for anyone involved and if i had given him my money and i'd lost it i'd be super dirty so i can completely understand how anyone who may have lost money is going to be really dirty on him but i'm actually more really worried for him there's uh, again chatter on twitter and things like that that he may have a serious sort of gambling problem particularly with you know leverage trading and that uh, and he may have lost a whole lot of people you know their money so terrible for those people that have lost their money but also really terrible for Alex because that means you know he's going to be having all sorts of dramas he he made some really good calls in crypto which has got me stumped you know he's you know he got people onto a number of coins really really early and they made tons of money but unfortunately it seems like maybe you know he chased the gains too much which is funny because he had a couple of coins that were literally you know 10x's 20x's 30x's and 100x's and things like that so crazy to think that uh he still needed you know to kind of do this if he's done this you know innocent until proven guilty i hope it's not true but at the moment it really is looking not favorable for him and and a real shame because his channel was uh really informative uh his paid group i heard was really informative and again a number of people made a lot of money from him but it seems a number of investors may also got into that uh to central bank coin and it looks like those funds may be gone so yeah uh, again i'm sorry all around for everyone involved it really is bad but i just i still hope alex saunders is all right you know he got married not that long ago i mean it was a couple of years ago i think but he's got a wife he's got a young son you know he had this you know amazing channel there for a while i hope that everything can get fixed and sorted and it's you know not just a complete write-off that would be a really uh, a really big shame and you know fellow australian uh, you know if he's done wrong he has to answer for his crimes but you know and innocent until proven guilty like i said but i understand there'll be people who will be really upset with him and they probably know better than me about whether he's sort of guilty or not particularly people who've lost money but i'll i'll hold judgment at the moment 
Right, the FUD campaign continues with crypto. So Senator Warren, crypto puts financial systems in the hands of shadowy super coders. There is an element of truth to that. And so I don't want to pretend like it's all complete rubbish and lies. There are some really shadowy people out there, you know, dodgy uh, exchanges that have been set up and just, you know, that you know typical saying shit coins out there that were never meant to do anything they were just a money grab that stuff is out there but a lot of crypto is really really good stuff in my opinion I can I can't offer you financial advice but I think this is just more FUD to try and keep it down and you know she's calling for all this regulation to come and I'm for regulation to a certain point I'm not for heavy-handed regulation and look, even Binance is starting to feel the pressure, but also in a good way, because hopefully this gets them legit uh, and they can have a long, successful career. And a lot of these things are actually for the benefit of the community in the long run. So Binance is making it harder to trade Bitcoin anonymously. Unfortunately, we need to get rid of the anonymously stuff. We need to know who it is uh, and who's doing what with their money. But outside of sort of more so who it is and what they're doing with it, where it's going. We don't need to know the full ins and outs, but you should, the, not so much me and you, but the government should be able to get on there and say, right, yeah, that's, you know, Fred Bloggs and he sent some money to Binance and bought some Bitcoin and now he sent it back. Outside of that, they don't need any more information. And again, that information should only really be available to the governments and that, not everyone else. But that's the thing with the blockchain is it does give all the information. We just got to make sure we can have that privacy layer so you can't see how much is coming in uh, and going out uh, of your wallet simply by you sending a transaction because unfortunately those transactions currently to my knowledge you can see a whole lot of uh, further information other than simply how much you sent who it went to uh, it gives you know all the previous history of your wallet and things like that for that individual coin not every single coin in your wallet uh, and that's the kind of stuff we don't need but you know, there's good regulation and I think this is coming. So it says here, it's daily withdrawal limit is decreasing for users who haven't supplied ID or photos. Fair enough, again, I, I think we need to get away from the completely anonymous stuff. Uh, we just can't have that because that's where the bad eggs are going to be. If we don't stamp on that really, really quickly, that will become uh, a bigger issue later on. You know, any projects that are coming out, we need to know who it is. You've got to put your face to it. If you're, you know, bringing some, you know, new program, all right, who are you? Who else worked on the pr program? None of this uh, mysterious sort of stuff anymore. I'm happy with Bitcoin to remain mysterious, you know what I mean, and unknown and all the rest of it. Anyone else, sorry, you need to, you know, be legit because you just, we can't trust that there's going to be another Bitcoin that was made for a good purpose, even though the creator or creators stayed, stayed, excuse me, and remained anonymous. All right, so we can go down here. As of today, new users on the exchange will be limited to daily withdrawals of 0 0.06 Bitcoin or the equivalent of roughly $2,000 if they have only completed the platform's basic account variation. The previous limit was 2 BTC per day or roughly $70,000 at today's prices. Now that is just for the basic verification. If you get fully verified, verified, uh, verified, verified, verified i'm not sure what their limit is exactly but i know it's pretty high so i wouldn't be too worried and also unless you're kind of a not so much a whale but you've been in the crypto space for a while not too many people are pulling two thousand dollars out uh in one go on any one given day but if they are get properly verified simple as that i'm all right with that and i like that binance is heading in this direction because i want binance to survive i like what cz's done i like the platform you know if he can then make it decentralized as well even better i don't own any bnb i had bnb and sold it and i'm kicking myself and wish i hadn't but that's the way it is i'm not going to go chasing it now it's had too much of a pump on into other projects you can't do them all as they say now, last but not least, when we're talking about sort of regular, well, not last but not least, but anyway, some regulation. So US lawmakers want to avoid Chinese-like surveillance with digital dollar. Completely agree. This is what worries me about digital dollars. I like the idea of them, but I don't like the idea of governments sort of having control of them. I'd rather a private sort of entity. And then even then, you know, we need to have the privacy that you can see who the transaction came from, 
where it's gone and the how much and all that, but nothing else. You can't then go back in to see, you know, their wallet and how much is there and all the rest of it. You know, that's kind of private stuff. We don't need all that information out there. And we just want to make sure that whatever money we have, again, then you can't have a government step in and say, well, you know, we really don't like that person that you sent money to, so you can't send it. Or we really don't like that, you know, you're buying uh, this type of whatever it is, uh, we don't like it, so we're going to stop you. If it's illegal, cool, no worries, it's illegal. I'm all for the law, I believe in the law, it's not perfect, but we need the law. But we don't want to have something that a government can simply say, we don't like it, so we're stopping it. I don't care what you like. It's not about what anyone likes. It's about what that person likes. And money needs to be free. It's one of the most important thing that, things that needs to be free is money and then our right to basically do what we want outside of breaking the law. We need freedom in all of those kind of points, in both of those points mostly. There's more freedom, you know, it's not just those points, but we need money to be free. It cannot be controlled. When it's controlled, it just goes, it falls apart. That's what all fiat dollar has happened to all fiat money because governments end up in control and they just ruin it. There hasn't been one that's lasted. The US dollar is not going to be any different. It will fail eventually because governments will ruin it. So we need money that's free. Yes, they need to be able to keep an eye on how much is being printed and things like that and where it's going. But if they actually control it, it'll just fade like all the rest right kazakhstan i thought this was very interesting so the government of kazakhstan plans to allow local banking institutions to offer cryptocurrency services to their users so a lot of countries are still sort of hesitant on this and it's always going to take someone to get out there and do it first now we've got uh, el salvador that is you know allegedly making uh, bitcoin legal tender and i'm not quite sure if they have uh, I think Paraguay was going to do the same, but uh, then they sort of pulled reins on that. But this is interesting. So the ruling body of Kazakhstan will reportedly allow local banking institutions to offer, to offer cryptocurrency exposure to its clients. And this is what I really like. The implementation will run for one year after which the government will decide whether to extend it. I think it will be extended. Again, outside of some block, black swan event or things going really bad, I think this will be the start and they'll probably be one of the first countries and then other countries will start to follow. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think people are going to spend too much Bitcoin in all fairness. Most people are going to use Bitcoin to simply hold their wealth. But there are a number of cryptocurrencies out there that, out there that are perfect for doing that kind of stuff. XRP, XLM, Litecoin, super fast, you know, low transaction uh, fees and things like that. Uh, and they basically are meant to be money. And Bitcoin really is, it's a store of value more than anything. All right, last but not least, IMF warns against adopting crypto assets like Bitcoin as legal tender. Now they are noting numerous risks and costs involved. The IMF does not see crypto assets catching on as a national currency. It might take a while, for something, you know, like a proper crypto to become a national currency. But I think it is catching on already. Not they don't see it catching on. It is already starting to catch on. And again, I think this is more a lot of FUD. I think they've seen the writing on the wall. They know exactly what's coming, but they're so entrenched in the cash system. They need to, you know, start to maneuver and, you know, move the chess pieces, as they would say, and get themselves set for what is coming. So they will put FUD out like this and make people think that, oh, well, it's never happening and we're going to stay with the dollar. Or, you know, if the US dollar doesn't make it, then the, you know, the Great British pound or whatever other currency they start to you know use maybe even the australian dollar it won't be the australian dollar we're just not big enough but you know let's say it was the australian dollar it's not going to last because governments control these monies and they always print them into oblivion it's always happened nothing has changed we're still doing exactly the same now making exactly the same mistakes you know it's going to take some time for the governments to learn i think the next generation so i.e. the children of today who are growing up, they're not going to fall for this. They're not going to allow uh, that to happen with money in the future, but it's going to take a long time to kind of change that. I mean, we need for our children to grow up right now. So that's, you know, probably another 20, 30 years before we can hopefully be rid of money that is controlled by central uh, points. Now, it's got to be made by someone, but then it can be completely, excuse me, decentralized. And again, we don't want governments or, you know, 
specific entities having too much control of it. They definitely need to have some regulation in that, but not control. Control, it just becomes a power bug and they always ruin it. That's just the way it's gone for the last few hundred, if not you know, more years that we have had those kind of fiat systems. They've all been ruined eventually and it's always been by governments. All right, I won't take up too much more of your time. I want to have a relaxing night. Uh, I finally don't have an early start tomorrow uh, and I want to try and enjoy it. So stay safe, be kind to one another. Everyone should be on that game train at the moment and it's looking pretty good. But again, just beware, eight green candles in a row doesn't happen too often. It could be a heavy rejection, at least with a big wick down, but I don't think it'll last long. All right, that's it from me. I'm out.